What does it mean for business in terms of the research that's been uh, commissioned? Well, the primary conclusion was that 2011-2020 will be a decade as revolutionary as the years of the original Industrial Revolution back in the late 1700s, early 1800s, which pretty much means, therefore, that Manchester will once again be the capital of the UK. <laughs> I'm now going to hand over to John, who is the co-author uh, of the research that's been done, the 2020 vision. There does still seem to be this, um, this obsession that there is money out there somewhere, even if it's not necessarily a very productive journey to try and, to try and find it. But, you know, if you go and talk to technology startups, for example, you find that um, a lot of them still believe that you know, it's just a question of time before they find the right VC or the right angel investor who's going to cure all their, all their problems. The borrowing and growth go together. If they're micro-businesses and they're effectively contractors and they don't ever want to be more than that, then they will never borrow money and so be it. I think there's also, particularly in the micro-business, an issue of the fear of being rejected when they go to the bank. I think that there is that issue where you go put an application in and it almost dampens the fact that your business may not be what it should be. What we've already had an in inquiries about, which is interesting and maybe where, you know, Bibby might develop a product that would do that, um, is consolidated lends to groups of businesses that actually band together to, to look to use that as a means by which they can leverage off buying power for various commodities and services, and one of which may well be in the future financial services, like factoring or invoice discounting. There is this sense that small businesses only trust other small businesses. They only really, you know, they're prepared to be advised by uh, other businesses. So in order to sort of, so that, I suppose in other words, so that there is a culture, if you like, around smaller businesses, which is, is very much kind of based on, well, you've got to, you know, you've got to walk my walk before I can before I'll, I'll trust you. And I just wondered whether that was, you know, that's one of the, was one of the potential but barriers to... Is that trust, though, or is it to uh, avoid rejection, as it were, as somebody said, that uh, if you go to a, a big and personal institution, then you, you think, well, they won't be interested, they might reject me. Whereas if it's a business which is more or less a peer, then um, you're, you're, you, I think you're much more comfortable in how you do it, which is not trust so much as uh, familiarity, isn't it? But it's also a habit, I suppose, if you don't know. If other businesses don't borrow, therefore I won't. The thing about social media, particularly for invoice finance, and the point about education and awareness, is a fantastic tool to address that collectively. You all have your own campaigns in terms of retention with existing clients, in terms of... PR and marketing campaigns, but I think it's almost as if there's lots of individual things happening, but I think that there potentially is an opportunity for a more collaborative, collective movement around education and awareness in the industry. One of the um, largest deals I'll place at the moment this year, which is currently going through, came to me via a LinkedIn recommendation, and um, when the guy spoke to me, he said, well, but hang on a sec, Dave, how do I just know this isn't someone you've asked to do it? And I said, well, why don't I put you in touch with that business and you have a Skype call with them? Now, why don't you have a Skype? And he said, well, oh, that's a great idea. I said, because you can actually see then. You're not corresponding by our email. You're not corresponding by text. You're not writing for a reference. Yeah? Go and talk to them about what I did for his business and see whether that's something you'd like me to repeat in yours. People are concerned about where their business is going in, in the next 12 months. So if they're signing up to a 12-month agreement or an 18-month agreement or even two-month agreement, you know, they may not have the certainty about whether they're going to be able to um, be around in 12 months to actually keep that, keep that facility in place. So maybe lenders need to look at a way to be more flexible to, to move with um, the market and move with the uncertainty with, um, you know, with the way people borrow their money. And be more reactive. Yeah, and, and, be, uh, yeah, and be more flexible mm -hmm. about the way they look at things because it's, you know, everybody, you know, it's, it's been a massive change in the last four or five years uh, and people have scaled back their businesses um, and I th that's one of the reasons why they're not they're not lending. So they're, they're thinking, right, well, I'm just going to stay, you know, stay mm. as I am. I don't want to borrow any more money because I don't know yes. where my business is going to be in 12 months' time. And action, maybe it's for stuff. lenders to be more flexible about the way that they approach their lending. Um, and and then and the, a useful point to come out about maybe grouping companies together and, and lenders lend to you know, a group of companies as opposed to one company in itself in order for them to, to benefit from using invoice finance. And I think 
you know, the likes of ABFA um, need to do more, and accountants, people are a good example of, of promoting what, how uh, invoice finance can benefit business, as opposed to what generally happens is the, is the kind of negative view against it. So. Yeah. so many companies now wait until the last minute when they've got a major problem to scream and say, I need help, you know. And one, one, of the, you know, one of the expressions that, that Steve used recently is, you know, don't wait till it rains to mend the roof. So many businesses do. There are ways out, and obviously if they speak early enough to the likes of myself and intermediaries, there are avenues that can be put in place and, you know, plans that can be implemented that can save that business. But if they don't do something soon, there's going to be a squeeze where they're not going to be able to go and get that overdraft that they've got currently with their bank, or it's going to be reduced. And, and we're going to see lots of businesses get into quite serious financial difficulty, I think. All the surveys that people do, all the research that people do, the one common theme throughout the industry is people want cash. Um, it's how you provide it and, and, and how you dress it up that, that confuses people. So thank you very much.